After the first atomic bomb, Einstein said, if I had known where this would lead, I'd have been a watchmaker. So, here I am. Either at the end of a world, or the beginning of one. A record must be kept, for the sanity of all concerned. I'll start from when the time slips were just beginning. Power, gentlemen, power enough to run the world or destroy it. Most of all, you've got to control it. That's where I come in. Status? DDQ on 12. All systems go. Ladies, gentlemen, I give you the atom. New and improved. Power level 75. Climbing 84, 89, 93, 96, 96.5, 97.7, 98.1, 98.5, 98.9. A weapon. A weapon beyond your wildest imagination, General. A particle beam that simply makes the enemy disappear. Project Safe World can give your armed forces the power of a black hole. What the hell was that? Some negligible atmospheric vibration, huh? Barely measurable. Will they fund the next step? Time out, Doc. In the three months since you've been testing this thing, we've had freak weather, people disappearing, and these time slips. I'm sorry, but we have a very public crisis brewing here. All right, so we have a side effect to contend with. It's not the end of the world. The president is getting a sore throat from denying any knowledge of this program. Joe, I've got to tell him something. Yes, well, tell him. When we implode an object, it slips out of time. And right now, when it goes, it sort of leaves the door open. What you're trying to say is that you seriously screwed up. He wanted a weapon. He's got a weapon. We got work to do. Well? He didn't go for it. Joe, it's not over. There's still time. The cloud's building again, Joe. I wanted to create a weapon that wouldn't destroy the world. And look what I did. Is it reversible? Oh my god, I hope so. Needs more work. I'll need the prototype laser tonight. Good afternoon, Dr. Buchanan. Would you like me to drive? No. I'm feeling energetic. I'll drive. Death and damage attributed to this phenomenon. There is still no statement from the Pentagon. And today, White House spokesperson Mary Ann Sutter again denied any connection between these severe stratospheric disturbances, apparent slips in time, and recent weapons testing at the Hawkins Institute in California. In other news, a tribute will be held tomorrow for the last remaining parts of the Brazilian rainforest. I am tracking intruders on your property. Shall I call security? Don't worry, baby. It's just neighborhood children. Very good. this morning. How'd you know it's dead? She got a new one. Ah. Um, Progress. Secula, secularum, finiculi, finicula. 
Okay, Sarah, Sarah. Come on here. Zero pollution, maximum ozone shield. Something tells me we're not in New Los Angeles anymore. Access mainframe. I am sorry, Dr. Buchanan. The central computer at Hawkins Institute does not respond. Access mainframe through uplink Tycho orbiter. The Tycho orbiter is not in position. Uplink any available satellite. Tracking. There are no satellites. Access television. Not even any radio. We are alone, Doctor. Jesus H. Christ, where am I? No record of a middle initial for a Jesus Christ, Dr. Buchanan. Very funny. Come on, in. Scientifically speaking, we are out in the sticks.
What place is this? The inn at Cheshire. How may I help you? Well, I would like to eat. I can give you venison at two francs, or trout at three and five. Ah. <laughs> Tell me, what would you give me for this? Fifty francs, a Swiss. Fifty plus the trout. Done. Take a seat. Mind if I join you? Can't stop you from sitting down. Tell me, is your attire the result of Napoleon's defeat, or have you been abandoned by a circus? Well, where I come from, this is considered an appropriate fashion. I'm from America. Ah, yes. America. Dr. Joseph Buchanan. I am also a doctor. But why do you come to Secheron and deny yourself the culture of Geneva? Well... I enjoy the distractions of country life. I scorn distraction. There's too much work to be done. Is that a timepiece? Yes. May I see it? No hands. The digits change shape. Are they filled with mercury? <laughs> How do you wind it? I don't. It runs on electricity. Electricity? But it's so small. I just want you to know so that we're all praying for you and your family. Thank you. Your brother was such a sweet boy. May the witch who killed him burn in hell. Yes, yes. I must go. Perhaps we can discuss electricity another time. I would like that. Oh, yes, I would like that, too. Dr. Frankenstein. Are you not well, sir? Yes, I, I've heard of your work. You're mistaken, sir. My work is quite unknown. Marie, get the doctor's bag. Thank you.
Good morning, Dr. Buchanan. Power on, manual drive. Manual drive is commencing now. Supposition. One, we've suffered a time slip. Two, the time slip phenomenon is related to implosion experiments. What is the probability of reversing time slip using prototype laser projector? That is an interesting question. Without access to the mainframe, I will need approximately 96 hours. Go to work. Yes, Dr. Buchanan. My sensors indicate we are near an urban center. Any instructions? Be a good girl. My options are limited. evidence presented today will prove that Justine Moritz did brazenly commit this most vile crime, this unforgivable act against the people of Geneva, nay, my friends, against all mankind. Excuse me, Reverend. Are the seats next to the young yes, lady over there open to the public? Obviously, good sir. You are a stranger here. Sorry, I don't understand. That is Lord Byron's mistress. The Lord Byron lives here in Geneva, yes, across the lake in Sin, with the poet Shelley and Mary Godwin. You mean Mary Shelley? They are not married. Perhaps not. But she's a great writer. Excuse me. A giant, you say? Oh, the tallest man I ever seen, sir. And yet you saw him only at night? Yes, sir. But his footprints went all over my field come morning. I dug one up to show you, sir. Here's your box, sir. Uh, Raise it. Show the court. <laughs> your Honor. That was the footprint of the beast that killed my sheep. I swear it! I've seen it with my own eyes! Now, 
What if it's the same brute what killed the little boy? <laughs> well, how do you suppose I lost the sheep, huh? How do you suppose I got this gash on my forehead? Spirit! <laughs> Next witness. Your Honor, Justin Morris is an innocent child. Sorry, Pedro, sorry. It's innocent. It's the blessed virgin. Forgive me, Miss Godwin. The young girl over there, is she the one on trial? Yes. She's accused of killing William Frankenstein, who was six. She lacks the physical strength necessary to commit the crime as described, so of course she's accused of witchcraft. It is a travesty. Yes, but excellent material for a book, I suppose. What do you mean, sir? My name is Joseph Buchanan. I'm a great admirer of your work, Miss Godwin. You must be confusing me with someone else, Mr. Buchanan. I've never been published. Can you identify this? It's the locket that belonged to William. Can you explain how this charm came to be amongst your belongings? When I awoke, I found it. The truth is, you took it. After killing William Frankenstein, after breaking his neck and wrenching his arm from his body. Come, girl, admit it. And allow yourself the mercy of God's forgiveness. No. No, I, I didn't do it. Excuse me. Now, as to the charge of witchcraft. Your Honor, we find Justine Moritz guilty of the murder of William Frankenstein. Justine Moritz, you have heard the verdict. You are hereby sentenced to hang by the neck till dead. Execution is scheduled for tomorrow at noon. I know you have returned. Reveal yourself. <laughs> Who are you? <clears throat> Give me what you promised, or I will break him, Victor. I will crush everyone around you. Then I will crush you. You made me. Now you would destroy me. Why? You murdered my brother. Murdered? You stopped his life. He was easily crushed. You should have made him strong, Victor, like me. I did not make William. No? Then 
Who did? He was born of woman, you monstrous wretch. I did not ask to be made monstrous. I am alone and miserable. Make me a mate as you promised. Make me a mate, and you will never see me again. I will never make another like you. Make me a mate! Or I will murder Elizabeth. Victor! Why are you following me? Are you from the court? I told you. I am a doctor. I know of your discovery. I know that you put life into that creature. And I know that he is killing. I wanted to give man the power to create life. To free him from a cruel and fictitious god. What man ever achieved that? Scientists have made far greater monsters than yours, Victor. Tell the truth. Show the world what you have created. Impossible. I've created an abomination. What about Justine? Who will free her from the mob? You cannot let her pay for your sins. What sins? I'm a scientist. I cannot sin. She must die. The truth is too unbearable. If you want to ease your conscience about William, then help the girl. If they kill her, how will you live with yourself after that? I don't know. Help the girl, Victor. Continuous flow of ink contained in battle. Remarkable. Did you make it clear that the girl is innocent? And you simply lick this? Yes, it tastes like peppermint. <laughs> Victor, the girl. Yes, certainly. The girl is innocent. Good. Then I shall take this letter in the morning and deliver it to the judge in person. No, not the judge. You must deliver it to my fiance, Elizabeth. She's of good family, and the judge will listen to her. You are truly a marvel, Buchanan. This electric carriage. You have mastered thermodynamics, geomagnetism, secrets of the universe. Where do you come from? The moon? Mount Olympus? I live in the same world you live in. Yes, truly. The world of science. We are brothers, Doctor. To make you Help! Help! back to the gate, boys. Help! Uh. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that.
Frankenstein Villa. Is Elizabeth here? If you mean Miss Lavanza, she does not live in this house. Victor assures me that she is here. I have an urgent letter for her. Ah. Victor asked me to deliver it to her in person. Thank you. Stay. I will inform Miss Lavenza you are here. Disapproves of the eavesdropper, sir, as do I. Won't you come in? I cannot say that I am grateful, sir. But I do thank you for your trouble. Allow me to escort you to the judge. But what do you mean by that? Well, they're going to hand Justine Moritz at noon. I'm afraid no one could prove her innocence. But the letter explains her innocence. There is nothing here about Justine. Victor warns me that I must leave Geneva immediately, for my safety. Where is Victor gone? You must tell me, or Justine will die. Berna! Listen to me. Victor's brother is already dead. Others have been killed, and more will follow unless we act. Victor is responsible, Elizabeth. Who are you? Why would you turn me against Victor? Werner. I want to help him, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Mary Shelley. Born Mary Wollstonecroft Godwin. Mary Shelley, born 1797, died 1851. Mistress to the poet Lord Byron and wife to the poet Percy Shelley. She is chiefly remembered as the author of the novel Frankenstein. Hard copy novel. Printing a hard copy. The subject matter is artificial intelligence. Miss Shelley wrote the book when she was only 19 years old, while living with Byron and Shelley at the Villa Diodati. Presently, some 200 yards north, northeast. Be forewarned, Dr. Buchanan. Probability is high that they are late sleepers. Maybe you could uh, point that thing another way. Why so? Tourist shooting season open today. I've bagged three already. Yes, but I'd hate to be shot without a proper introduction. You must be Lord Byron. I have no intention of introducing myself, and I feel quite persecuted when British trespassers lurk about my property. Oh, I'm not a trespasser. I'm an admirer. Dr. Joe Buchanan. You're not British, are you? <laughs> I'm sort of uh, nouveau American. What about those? What? Those contrivances. Oh. These are a gift to one of the greatest visionaries of the 19th century. My God. These lenses are exceptional. Are you an inventor? A scientist. Really? 
I thought all American scientists were named Benjamin Franklin. Ah, let's see what Mistress Mary's doing. Damn, nothing scandalous. Writing as usual, what a waste of female talent. Well, perhaps Miss Godwin has literary talent as well. What do you want here, sir? I must see Mary. <gasps> Miss Godwin. A suitor? <laughs> what will Shelley say? We breakfast late, the cannon. Join us. Prove yourself an amusing guest. We suffer from too much peace here. There is murder at hand in Geneva. Well now, what's this? Not a bailiff, I hope, or a poet. Meet Percy Shelley, my fellow reprobate in exile. Ah, he's risen. Oh. Joe Buchanan. What's up? An American scientist. Mm. And are those slippers American, too? I've quizzed them already, Percy. They were made by Mr. Florsham in a redundancy called New York, New York. <laughs> well, what brings you all the way to our little paradise, Doctor? Just another more. Drawn to Mary's face. Oh. Mm. Uh, listen, I'm here because of the imminent execution of Justine Moritz. I believe he wants to take Mary to the hanging. A romantic. You know how it is, Percy. Sex and dare. <laughs> ah, there she is. My love. Mary, allow me to introduce Dr. Joseph Buchanan. As it happens, we've already met. How do you do again, Dr. Buchanan? That is the most mysterious cloud. Ever seen? See, a remote sunlight gleams, as though it were not a cloud at all, but a gateway to a distant world. What did you want to see me about, Dr. Buchanan? Miss Godwin, I know that you've been following the trial of Justine Moritz. You must help me try and stop her from hanging. Why come to me? Because you know that the girl is innocent. You know the truth. Well, that's what your book is about. What do you know of my book? I've only a few chapters of a story. Are you from a journal, sir? Worse. Maybe publisher? Yes, I believe the girl is innocent. But I don't know anything that would help her. Forgive me. I thought that you knew the truth. I thought that you could help me.
Kill the girl. And they very nearly killed you, too. I watched the whole terrible incident with these. Huh. You were very brave. And foolish. How did you get here? I sailed across the lake to rescue you. How did you know I was writing a book? Long story, Mary. Well, it's usually best to start at the beginning. Suppose I show you instead. Is this your carriage? Yes. Yes, it is. It's amazing. I'd like to go for a ride. I'd be delighted. Good afternoon, Mary. I am not a carriage, but a car. Let's fly. suspension system. I've never even imagined anyone like you before. Well, that's not surprising because I don't exist yet. I'm from the future. <laughs> well, that's absurd. I know of your book because I've read it. But that's impossible. I've only just started writing. And you'll finish it. And you'll publish it. And you'll add a new word to every language on Earth. Frankenstein. Says Mary Shelley. Congratulations. My book. My book will be known in the future. How does it end? How do I end it in Shelley? Do we die young? Do you really want to know that? Stop the car. my own life. Well, Joe from the future, wherever did you come from? There. Percy's cloud. He was right. It is the gateway to another world. I made it. Came through it. Fractured the core of time and space. I wanted to do the world a favor. But like Victor Frankenstein, I created a monster. Then it's true. Dr. Frankenstein has created a man. I'm afraid it is. It is an abomination in the eyes of God. don't believe in God. I don't know. I see. Science is your religion. I never thought of it like that. Try 
tried to imagine what a man of science must live with. I think he lives with madness. With madness? The madness of possibility. I'm sorry if I've said something to upset you, Joe. Upset me? Mary, you amaze me. You live in the 19th century, and yet you understand the future infinitely better than I do. I wish I did. Percy and Byron preach free love. I practice it. You and I are under an enchantment, Joe. You fly to some other place in time. I wish it were that easy. This place, this time. I don't even understand why I ended up here. I'm afraid I have a theory. Would you like to hear it? I think you're here to stop Dr. Frankenstein. Mistress? Please prepare my carriage. Shall I drive you, Miss Lyons? No, I must go alone. To see Dr. Frankenstein. As you wish. Are you going to kill it? No. Quite the opposite. I must make him a mate. threatened to kill Elizabeth. Buchanan, please. I have laid all the groundwork, but I haven't been able to store enough electricity. I know you have abilities beyond my own in such matters. I think I should show you something. What is this? Victor, this is your future.
What are you? Victor made me. Victor. But I am to be Victor's wife. He would not want you to hurt me. I know. no match for my creature. We are not very well made, you know. Our eyes are poor. Our limbs use muscles to the disadvantage of both. I have made wonderful improvements. Wonderful improvements. I didn't do this. Get the Are you alive? Yes. I think so. Good. Ah, Buchanan, you're awake. Bring him here. I've been studying this pamphlet that explains your carriage. I presume it can store enormous amounts of electrical power. Yes, it can. But you have to supply the superconductor with tremendous power to begin with. You'll get no help from me. Buchanan. It could take me a few days to analyze this machine on my own. Perhaps you would like more time to think about it? I could let him play with you all night. So, can you make it work for me?
I must prepare. Watch him. Good evening, Dr. Buchanan. My sensors indicate substantial damage to my electrical system. Yes, well, forget that. Have you completed the calculations I asked for, old son? Yes. All probabilities indicate that it is not possible to reverse a time slip effect. Not possible? Why not? Time, space, unbound. Come on, explain yourself. Time, space, unbound is the logical outcome of your experiment, Doctor. You have introduced a new condition into the physical world. What is that? It's a machine that thinks and talks. What is the probability of surviving a laser-generated implosion? Did you make it? Yes. The probability is high that you will be transported to a new place and time. Is it a man? No, it is not a man. Are you strong enough to carry those cables to the top of the bell tower? Yes. Victor made me very strong. Oh, boy. did not make you, did he? No. Look. Can you climb up and connect the coil to the bottom of the cross? program loading now when you get maximum power then you just turn my little baby off goodbye dr buchanan Reversing a gross mistake of fate. No. The pain and the guilt have driven you insane. Oh, have they now? Well, I can live with pain, and I can live with guilt. Subdue him. <laughs> it is Elizabeth I cannot live without. And she will have new life. No one can create a soul. <laughs> the soul? 
<laughs> That's a crutch for weaker men than you and I, Buchanan. There now. It begins. Pull the first lever. Power to implosion is now 98.1% and rising. Power 96.5, holding. The next two levers. She will die. There's nothing more that I can do. Pull every remaining liver. Begin implosion sequence. Laser. What is happening? Meet my monster. What have you done? Think down. Put it back the way it was. I can't. Put it back the way it was or I will kill you. There's nothing I can do. Then damn you.
Elizabeth? Step away now. Come here. Come to me. The rupture of space and time is spreading in a chain reaction. Who knows what exists in this frozen tomorrow? Apart from him, the only signs of life in this remote place are remnants of a future civilization. This world you made is better than Victor's. 
It is barren, as I am barren. Lonely, as I am alone. This is the brain of the great city beyond. The last refuge of mankind.
You think you have killed me, but I am with you. 